Welcome back to another episode of Picking Up the Pixels RPG Love. I'm your host, Boston. Joining me as always is Musum. Hello. And Mina. Hi. I haven't been podcasting for about two and a half weeks, so I had a real hard time with that intro. Uh, let's let's get started, <laughs> Musum, with uh, what you've been playing this past month. Okay. So, first game I'm going to talk about is Cyberpunk. Yes. Uh, I did like it, but let me put two fat disclaimers before I start talking about it. Okay. Um, okay. One of them, one of them, uh, uh, I won't get into it, but we had a, a loss in our family in November that has kind of thoroughly affected my entire life. So mm-hmm. that's going to affect my viewpoint. Uh, the other is uh, my views on cyberpunk aren't Boston's or Mina's. They aren't E1M1 <laughs> networks as a whole. Right. They're only my own. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I don't think I'm going to say anything crazy on here other than I liked it with some criticism. So, like, don't think I'm going to suddenly try to pin it as, like, the greatest game ever. But this is just to... People seem to feel strongly about this game, and I just don't want them to think that I'm going to be a, a avatar for their anger. Oh, sure. Um, so, like, if you're... If you don't... If you don't let's this is a general rule for everyone on the internet. If you don't agree with someone's opinion, just tamp it down. You don't need to let <laughs> anyone know. Just keep it to yourself. <laughs> yeah. All right. Man, I need help with that on my social media. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's okay to say like, that. oh man, I wish I wish more people liked Cyberpunk. I'm really having a fun with it, but it's not okay to at yeah. someone and be like, I hope you die. It's like that's that's yeah. far too far. So I figured I'd start out just by by talking about a lot of the different aspects. Like, so my expectations in going into Cyberpunk that I was gonna was that I was gonna get a Deus Ex Skyrim game. Oh, like, okay. Effectively, a big open world with a bunch of Deus Ex mechanics in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and for the most part, it is not that. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> it is functionally, I think, closer to like a, a Ubisoft open world or like a um something else like it's like a non-gta open world yeah like you have sections of the city and each section has um you know a bunch of like odd robberies that can happen in it but they'll also have like little side jobs for um that don't really have any story it's just sure oh there's some gangs busting up this place so go help the corrupt cops take out the gangs busting up sort of like the more recent spider-man games the ps4 ps5 ones man i haven't played a ton of it but i bet so okay it sounds pretty Um, similar yeah honestly that's probably a really good comparison like i've only played probably like five hours of that game of Mm -hmm. the spider-man ps4 but like city wise that's probably accurate Mm because when you're in the city it feels like it should have like the level of side activities that a Skyrim or GTA would have. Um, but as far as I can tell, it doesn't. Now, I've only put probably a dozen playtime hours into it. Um, and the game is about a seven-hour intro. Oh, wow. Um, which is long, but so far that intro, I, I thought the intro was amazing. Mm-hmm. Like I was pretty blown away by how good it was because they kind of... You know, you choose, like, when you start the game, you choose three backgrounds, which effect gives you some different dialogue options throughout the game. Um, I don't think it changed the way V talks. He kind of talks like he's from the Bronx or Jersey or something like that. <laughs> um, but, like, you can choose Corpo, so you'd be, like, a, a corporate whatever worker. And I had a friend who ran that one, and he said, like, one of the numbers in your phone is your psychiatrist. Mm. <laughs> you could just call I don't know. Um, and then they have street kid and then they have uh, I can't remember what the last one's called but it's basically like you live outside the city as like a Mad Max type um, so I chose the street kid like that seemed like it would probably be fun since the majority of the game will be in Night City um, and so you kind of go through like a quick street kid intro and then there's like a set event that happens where you meet your partner in crime for the time being and then they do this cool like sliced up cut scene thing of you and that dude uh, kind of becoming friends and having drinks and pulling heists and things um, and then it goes off into the intro mission which I think is for the most part done really well um, like the game itself like it, it does have like some Deus Ex style mechanics in it 
Uh, I think the hacking in the game is probably closer to Deus Ex than like Watch Dogs. Oh, okay. Watch Dogs, you can say, there's a droid flying in the air. I'm going to take it over and then fly that droid into this base and do X, Y, and Z with it. Like Right. But in Watch Dogs, my... it's largely like one button. It's like, hack this thing, move over here, hack this thing. Like There's yeah. nothing, not a lot yeah. going on. As much as I enjoy those games. Well, and I don't know that there's a lot going on with hacking in this either. It's just in a different direction. Mm. So, and they do do some, like, I think both franchises do some cool things with the idea. So, like, in this one, you have, um, like, one, you have hardware in your head that, uh, determines how many RAM slots you get. And your RAM number is basically like your spell points for hacking. Um, oh, okay. So you only you start out with very few of them, and you start out only being able to equip like two hacking things. So like if you want to go the hacking route, just new player advice, immediately save up like 25,000, pull some jobs to get your street cred up, because they use your street cred stat to limit what you can buy in the game. Um, oh sure so it's like your your town reputation in some other games okay yeah the more street cred you get you know the more people are willing to sell you the really cool stuff so like right now i think the unit i have lets me equip like six different hacks and you can they have like a whole uh, uh crafting system where you can make hacks but as far as i can tell you aren't making custom hacks hmm. you're just making predetermined things um so generally, like, uh, I guess to describe this, I'll say what I do, because I'm running like a hacking character, is I'll walk into a place, I'll find any electrical device, whether that is a vending machine, a person, or a camera, and I will perform breach protocol on it, which reduces the RAM cost of any hacks I'm going to do on the facility for the next three minutes or something like that. Um, once I do that, I then do the ping hack, which highlights uh every type of that object in the facility like in my range oh nice um, so when i first got the game doing ping on larger facilities would drop the frame rate to a crawl and, and uh, occasionally <laughs> crash it um <laughs> within the first week that luckily stopped happening oh uh, nice because i i Fairly quickly went to a large place and was like, oh, I may want to rethink this hacker thing. But um, <laughs> the uh, now it works. It's pretty smooth. I'm, oh, by the way, I'm playing on PS4 Pro. Oh, okay. um, I meant to install it on my regular PS4 for science in this podcast, but like the game's like 70 gigs, and then I got to have like oh. another 50 <laughs> gigs free for the initial patch. And right. oh my gosh, no. That thing's got a 500 gig hard drive. I don't. That's, That's a, a lot of in work. Itself. That's a lot of, and on top of that, like I already almost maxed out my freaking uh, data cap last month. So, oh, right. <laughs> um, but on PS4 Pro, for the most part, like you're looking at 30 second load times, which is really just to get into the game, and mm -hmm. you know when you die. Um, but other than that, it works fairly smooth. I don't get too many frame rate drops. Um. <laughs> Uh, I was getting about a crash, uh, probably about an average of every two hours, hmm. um, which I, I don't, I guess it's hard for me, like with the crash stuff, because like Watch Dogs Legion, like I was playing that when it came out in oh, November boy. and it was it... really the same situation. <laughs> that game launched in and, a very bad spot too. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I guess I just have really like low expectations of this. Like mm -hmm. maybe I'm just pleasantly surprised when a game just works <laughs> well but. a lot of open world rpgs always have these problems witcher 3 had it on launch like skyrim had it on launch like they're all yeah. kind of have these issues on launch and then they kind of they get smoothed out over time yeah i and you know probably the worst one was one i bought off the shelf back in the day which was and granted this was 25 years ago and absolutely is no uh bearing on whether you should be mad or not at <laughs> cyberpunk for being glitched but like daggerfall oh uh, yeah elder scrolls arena or elder scrolls 2 daggerfall like that was a game that was for the most part procedurally generated mm -hmm. and to advance the main quest in like five or six spots you had to receive a letter in that game and one of like it was extremely common glitch to not receive those letters or you would go into a dungeon and 
because it was procedurally generating these 3D areas in the 90s, um, <laughs> the exit would be impossible to reach. Uh, Great. <laughs> like, it was, you know, that was pre-download a patch day, you know. Right, like, it's like hope uh, the PC Gamer demo floppy, or maybe CD, yeah. if you got lucky, had a patch on it. Yeah, so... I'm with everyone. I want them to work when they come out, too. Right, right. Um, <laughs> right. I think I just have incredibly low expectations for these things, though, yeah. unfortunately. But um, where was I? All right, the hacking. Uh, so then, like, further hacks are, like, you can... Uh, I have, like, two hacks I typically use on enemies. One of them will reboot their optics, which will let me sneak up behind them and knock them out. Uh, and the other is, like, supposed to kill them, but as far as I can tell, it just damages them and lets them know where I am, so I don't use it too often. Mm. Um, the, uh... Ah, <sighs> oh, gosh, what else to say about this game? <laughs> there's the, there's a lot, like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, it's weird in that, like, most of the side activities i found don't have stories to them. They're just... Collect the tarot card images on this wall, or... Mm. go brawl in a you know that's another weird thing like cyberpunk and lead and uh Watch Dogs legions two games in my head that are known for hacking the first side mission you get is someone sending you to go brawl in <laughs> uh, fighting arenas i was surprised but. about that with legion where it's like all right here's your first mission underground fighting it's like uh what <laughs> <laughs> I there was a like the first week i played that like Susie kept going like is all you do is like punch people in this game because <laughs> i kept <laughs> apparently <laughs> no i just keep going to these arenas and losing unfortunately yeah <laughs> um but cyberpunk they give me the option to say no to those requests and mm. so while it doesn't get rid of it out of your journal it still is so a little satisfying mm -hmm, uh, right because <laughs> now you read your journal entry and you're like this bartender wants you to go brawl, blah, 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 but you said no. Right. Well, you can call him if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, the voice acting, for the most part, I'm, I'm enjoying, but I don't... Uh, in my experience, a lot of people come out of a game or a movie and say, man, that voice acting was bad, and I didn't notice it. So I am yeah. maybe immune to those things, too. Uh, and that may be another 90s thing. Maybe a 90s anime voice acting that has lowered my expectations <laughs> or acceptance level. Yeah, I think I'm in the same boat where it's like, oh, that voice acting was pretty good. And everyone's like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the so like one of the cooler side quests I found uh, was the uh, and it's one I think everyone will get like in the intro mission, you uh, get into a AI cab called Delamain. And later on, he has, like, some escaped cabs where you have to go and find them. And each cab has a different personality, and mm. hijinks ensue, we'll say. Uh, That's fun. But but his quest stuff, I think, was one of the more entertaining. And it looks like I'm starting to get some of the character side quests into. Like, uh, I've noticed uh, a lot of people like Judy, rightfully so. She is probably the best character. It makes me wish I rolled up a female for my... V, V being the main character, mm -hmm. because she is gay, and I can't romance her. Oh, okay. But, um, she has a side quest that I'm going to start looking at. It sounds like it's going to be a cool, like, liberate the brothel place from whatever evil gang is trying to take it over. Mm. Um, you know, something else that I should mention, everything is corrupt and bad in this game. Like, right. The cops are bad, the gangs are bad, the corporations are bad. Like, there's no, <laughs> like, once you accept everyone has, like, a bit of evil with them, like, you know, just maybe take that, like, into account anytime you, like, I, I'm i not necessarily pro-help the cops in the game either, but, like, at a certain point, I'm like, well, both sides are bad and I need money, so. <laughs> right, so pick the, pick the least evil and get paid. <clears throat> yeah. Um, there haven't been uh, a ton of choices in, the, well, I say that, I guess there have been a lot of like dialogue choices and some of them aren't even like presented as choices. It's just, oh, you clicked on the thing and now the person's mad at you because you were just thinking you were asking a question or something. Oh, um, right. It, it mostly is pretty clear on like where that stuff 
is, you just, it isn't like highlighted like a dialogue option per se. Um, mm. They have a lot of uh, skill related dialogue options. Um, all the skills. So you have, uh, I think it's six or seven skills and each skill has like one to two skill trees in it. So like the intelligence skill has the quick hack and I forget another hacking tree and like um, they have another skill tree called cool and that one has stealth and um, I can't remember. I think critical damage under it or something hmm. like that. Uh, so I'm mainly concentrating on intelligence and uh, the one with crafting in it, uh, which okay. is going up very slowly. Like they do a cool thing with the equipment where it's it's kind of in that Diablo-esque borderland system where everything's kind of color-coded maybe not color-coded the best in the menu like the menus kind of suck in this game but mm. um it is that level of common uncommon rare epic and then they have iconic weapons which have a name and and have notoriety to them but any of those weapons you can get crafting parts and upgrade to wherever your current damage level is oh cool um so you can continue using them which i really appreciate um keanu reeves uh this kind of awesome in this game um oh, nice he's he's a complete prick like the first couple <laughs> times you meet him like you're like i don't think i'm gonna be able to stand this dude he's such a freaking jerk right but like the longer he's around the more it's just clear like oh no this guy's kind of a angry washed up rocker that just wants to topple corporation like there's something lovable about him even though he's completely a prick and it's probably one of keanu reeves better performances honestly oh wow nice um or at least i can't think of too many movies i've seen where he's had to put mu this much range forth you mm. know um but you don't get keanu reeves till basically after the intro so kind of set your expectations there oh okay uh, and really you should finish the intro before you mess with the rest of the game anyway um what else to say the uh there are people who try to sell you cars and vehicles and i don't know why i feel like i'm not at a place money wise in the game where i'm gonna want to spend money on something especially when i keep getting like free vehicles from other stuff oh sure um you do have an apartment in the game but there's not much you can do like there's a all the mid all the mirrors in the game are kind of glitchy it's like a weird thing where you walk up to the bathroom mirror and you have to press a button to engage it and you can see your character but most of the time it glitches and you aren't wearing your hat or something like that oh right um your hair doesn't generate or i don't know they, i don't understand why you have to press a button and why they didn't just do reflective surfaces in the game and right. i don't understand the point of even having that interaction with the mirror at the moment but um <laughs> Uh, I should also mention, like, this game is in no way for kids. Um, yeah. It is profanity-laden. <laughs> it is, uh, like, one of the side missions was, like, they took the movie 8mm and the movie Strange Days and combined them. <laughs> Jeez. Um, the, uh, I, uh, I figured it was going to be a while before I saw a romance scene. So for this podcast, I'm blaming you guys. Okay. Um, <laughs> I went ahead and hired a prostitute, uh, which I immediately regretted for <laughs> around five minutes because that's about how long the freaking cut scene. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, no. Like, it is just shy of, like, hardcore pornography. Like, it is. <laughs> um, like, this game, like, kind of pushes a lot of, ed like, I think they were trying, like, obviously they wanted to make the game edgy. But I think they made the game edgy in a lot of ways that doesn't jive with the story or gameplay or anything else in it. Mm. Like, which, <clears throat> like, you know, like the, a big talk on the, you know, everyone's going crazy over the genitalia options for the game. Right. Which, as far as I, why, but... there's no point in them. <laughs> right. There's literally no point in them. Um I guess except for that initial glitch, which sounded very funny that I never got. <laughs> yeah, that, that was pretty funny, yeah. 
honestly, like the best, I, I got two really good jank glitches that I really enjoyed. Like one of them was like, so everyone plugs like their little USB memory sticks in the back of their head. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I played through this cut scene and then it glitched at the end and crashed and I reloaded it and was going through the cut scene again, except this time it had replaced the chip in the back of this person's head that he was handing me with a gun. <laughs> so <laughs> he pulled the gun out of his head Great. and then stuck it into my head. The Persona 3 remake we've been looking for. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, the other janky glitch, which I, I really should have just opened the PlayStation dialogue and got the video clip of it, um, was I had just loaded the game. Like, I just started it. Um and I summoned my car, and I got in it, and then a car fell from the sky onto my car. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Which was very surprising. Scared the crap out of me. I got out of the vehicle. I looked around. I'm like, well, there's no other vehicles here, so it's not like someone hit the car and knocked it onto me. Like, the only thing I can guess is that it meant to generate the car where my car was and was too long. Um, which... You know, maybe that's another technical thing I should mention. This game, this game's pop-in stuff is super weird um, because it does have a lot of Mm pop-in and you mainly notice it when you're driving around town. And then when you stop, sometimes it is not loaded that area you're in yet. So like it may generate like this pixely like wall or closed door. And then once you wait a minute, it'll disappear and it'll just be like an open like it'll generate the area that you can now walk into, whereas you couldn't before. Oh, okay. Right. Like, it's it's weird. <laughs> yeah. I don't... I'm, I'm not really sure. I don't know. I My theory is, like, they probably spent most of the 10 or 8 years or whatever working on this game developing the engine. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, I know people said, oh, they should have delayed it again, but, like, they... If they were going to delay it again, like, they, they probably should have delayed it for, like, another couple years type of thing. Yeah, like uh, a significant amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. Just to bring it up to that Skyrim GTA level, which... Right. I mean, those are still glitchy games, but they had more content. But this still has a lot of content. I just don't think it's going to be quality content. Um, right. The uh, the game soundtrack, I think, is really good. Mm. Um. The radio stations, like, I enjoy, but I really, really like the combat music a lot in this game. Uh, oh. It's like a Doom 2016 level of, like... Oh, hello. ...combat music. Just electronic instead of guitars, you know? <laughs> nice. But, um, same same level of aggression. Uh, but that's, know, that's... That's probably all I'm, I'm going to say about the game for now. Like, the the guns and weapons, I think, are good. Like, my friend tells me smart weapons, you can basically shoot around corners and things like that. Oh, yeah. I'm mainly concentrating on melee, which has been fairly effective so far. Nice. Um, They do give you the option to not kill people. As far as I can tell, I don't know that there's any, like story payoff for not killing people oh sure or you like you don't get more xp because you tranked someone (laughs) yeah well it's like you walk up behind someone and grab them and it says you can knock them out or you can kill them Mm. Um, most of the time i knock them out but like for instance on that side mission that was eight millimeter made strange days i killed all those people Mm. um (laughs) right (laughs) they had they had passed the point. I'm normally very pro rehabilitate and forgive. Right. They had passed. Not the those point. guys. <laughs> they are one hair. One. They are just shy of a Serbian film. You know. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, so that's cyberpunk. I'm enjoying it. I like it. I don't love it. I don't know if I'm going to love it or not. Um, but I'm going to I'm going to keep playing it. And right. I'm sure CD Projekt Red will unfortunately abuse their employees until it's a Witcher level of a game. Right. Uh, right. But I don't know. I I really hope that they get I mean, I, I know they did the paint bonus thing, but I hope they keep stuff like that going because they've mm-hmm. they've already made their eight year budget back off of selling as many Right, in like the first did. week or something. Like yeah. it was yeah. very quick, yeah. I really hope all those employees are making a lot of money. Yep. Uh, and the only other thing I've been playing is uh, Epic Seven. Mm. Um, <laughs> 
which uh, I've I kind of got distracted for a bit there and kind of just ground grinded for a couple weeks and then pushed the story a little bit further. Uh, I got to one of the battles with Mort, who is kicking the crap out of me. Oh, Mort. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Did you see his event? I did. I <laughs> I pulled on him too and went ahead and got him, even uh-huh. though it looks like people didn't really like him online much. But he's 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 good. He's uh he's comparable to Alencia. I, I I think you had already missed out on Alencia. Just yeah, I did. very tanky damage dealer, basically. He's he's very tanky. He can take out what he dishes, so well, that's good. It's like I've leveled him up a bit, but I haven't messed with most of it. Like right yeah. now, I'm kind of who am I putting my resources into? Oh, Euphine. Yeah. Um, Ooh, Euphine's really good. She's um. So I guess this is gonna go a little into the weeds of stuff of of uh, Epic Seven, but Euphine is kind of the opposite of Mort, where Mort is very tanky, but also deals out damage. You'll find that more people are into uh, a damage dealer that's a glass cannon and can just just drop the damage really hard and fast. But she's pretty fragile, um, honestly. So she gets, you know, she she takes a hit from something. She might just go out. But if you're fighting against anything that is buffing itself, um, Euphine just does not care about those buffs and will rip their buffs and do more damage because they're buffed so oh wow and and she's who i'm trying to use against the current version of more time on i can't remember if it's the first time i fought him or not but it's the it's the point in the story i don't think this is too much of a spoiler like you know at some point <laughs> ross is gonna have to fight more and i yeah. think it's the first time that they are fighting and he basically buffs himself almost every turn he increases his speed every time you hit him. Um, oh, jeez. And he debilitates your team like every other turner or something like that. Um, jeez. So, like, I've been experimenting with different lineups, but um, I don't know. I, I got my butt kicked. And I looked online to see what everyone was using, and they were all recommending Dizzy. They said, oh, yeah, Dizzy makes this super easy. And. I don't have Dizzy. <laughs> oh, right. D- Dizzy was the Guilty Gear collab from uh, yeah. a while ago. Yeah. I, if they ran it again, I missed that time. Yes, so there I was a second. It. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So that's probably it for my chances of getting one of those. You never um, know. They might do a, a third collab. They seem to have been, enjoyed the first two runs, at least. Yeah. I need to save up my pulls again anyway. I... I went a little crazy over. I haven't spent any money, but like I've just started like pulling on Fairy Tale Tenebra or whatever mm-hmm. her name is. Alice in uh, Wonderland and... version of Tenebra. <laughs> yeah. Normally, I don't pull unless I know I have enough to do the full like one full pity twenty one. Yeah. And this time I did not, so I basically just wasted a bunch of pulls. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's okay. I've, I've accepted my losses. I'm moving on. Um, <laughs> I just have to figure out how to beat what's his name, but um, yeah, right now I think I'm using. I think last time I tried him, I used Euphine. I used. Oh no, I'm gonna forget everyone. Um, <laughs> gosh, I had another person who would dispel buffs, and what I found was like I could dispel buffs like one round, and then the second round, and then the third round, I was kind of just at his mercy mm-hmm. um which was enough for him to overtake me but um i don't know i'll get there one of these days so uh i'm still enjoying that i still don't know how much time i'll put into it after i get past that third storyline uh but i still really enjoy the writing in that game a lot there was so. uh a five star they just uh you got a five star ticket didn't you for logging in every day or whatever it was i did do you remember what oh, you yeah, got? Oh, yeah, I got the vampire kid that has bubbles. Oh, bubble. haste. <laughs> yeah. Haste, haste, yes. He he does uh, bleed damage, and he can also prevent things from healing it themselves. Hmm. hmm. Well, that's good. Like, <laughs> I have a lot of good characters. I just... 
you know, I have like four or five plus 15 characters mm -hmm. and then maybe, maybe 10, six stars, something like that. Maybe a little less. <laughs> um, and everyone else is pretty far below that. <laughs> right. Um, but anywho, that's all I got. So, <laughs> um, Mina, what do you have for this uh, past month? Well, let's see. Uh, I was gifted an early Christmas present of Yakuza Like a Dragon on yeah. the 22nd. And I have 42 hours played so far. And <laughs> I haven't go. played the last two days because I've been busy with other things. So you do the math on how much I like this game. Right. <laughs> and that's active hours. None of that is idle time. I This is... I played literally that much of Yakuza Like a Dragon. Oh, man. Um, I love this game. And I am probably, I think, out of all three of us, I'm the one who has the least Yakuza hours put in. I think I've put in, like, maybe two hours into Yakuza 0, and that's all I have for the series. So okay. I think I'm the, the least familiar. <laughs> right. Um. I love this game. And uh, for those of you who've n also never played a Yakuza game, I, I believe the other ones, correct me if I'm wrong, the other ones are more beat-em-ups. Yeah, they're right? like action brawler action RPGs. Brawl. Okay. Um, this is not. This is this is straight up. This is RPG only. This is yep. turn-based menus. menus. <laughs> yeah, using items. Items you Calling got summons. <laughs> my my favorite thing is is um if if you've ever played uh Super Mario RPG or uh the South Park uh was it the Stick of Truth like or whatever Stick of Truth yeah yeah he, there there's also that perfect perfect blocking mechanic where if you oh, press cool. a button you you block damage but you have to kind of press it multiple times if the thing you're fighting has multiple hits. Oh, okay. So similar to what Musin's uh, parental disclaimer about cyberpunk, uh, that needs to go down for Yakuza as well. Uh, this is oh, not. Wow. This is, but I mean, it's 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 charming in its in its humor. It's funny. I've laughed a lot. I clearly enjoy it a lot. Mm -hmm. But without a doubt, uh, I, I thought about originally doing a let's play, and then I realized, God, I'd have to. I'd have to bleep out so many things. I'd have to blur out things. I'd have to. Oh, well, right. It was just like you know this ain't worth. I'm just gonna play the game. <laughs> like, I don't right. want to do all that. I'm so YouTube would just demonetize me. Well, not even demonetize <laughs> right. me. I'd probably get hit with with all kinds of stuff, and I'd be like, ah, uh, I don't want. I don't want to have to deal with all that. So I was just like, I'll just play it. Um, I mean, it's so good. And so I, I know some people were telling me like, oh, only play it with the the Japanese dub or whatever. And and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, just I'm gonna play with the English dub. I want to I want to see what it's like. This is like the whole Persona Five cast is in this. I'm right. like I'm like nine. If like if they're not voicing a main character, they're voicing the the random like. Like I can hear their voices. I'm like, I mm -hmm. hear your voice. You cannot fool me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Random NPC. You like, uh, like, uh, with without a doubt, I was hearing them all. Um, nice. And then I also found Naoto Shirogane's voice actress was voicing this Ooh. character. I knew right away. I was like, you're Naoto. <laughs> right. I, I hear it. I hear it. You're. But it's it's so good. Um, and the. And one of the best voice actors, of course, is George Takai, and his character is outstanding. His voice nice. acting is incredible, as you would assume. Yep. Um, I didn't even know he was in the game. Oh, oh, he's in the game. Oh, he's in the <laughs> game. He does a great voice. Uh, the main character, Ichiban's voice, he is voiced by... If you guys remember the character um, from... The, the the arms dealer in Persona Five that that Persona oh, yeah. Rap, that's that's the main character's voice actor. Ooh, um, nice. The game has a pretty 
pretty lengthy intro tutorial thing, a story build up thing. It it like it's kind of like when you go into like um you, you, when you go into like Persona Four or or whatever, you, you think to yourself like, all right. I'm not going to be getting to do like, I'm not going right. to get to do like the game for a little bit cuz the game's got to the game's got to do a story setup. Yeah, first couple hours is going to be real right. slow. It's real slow. I would say like you don't even like if, if I were anyone playing this game, you need to wait until you get your third party member before the game is like we're going to start removing some of these training wheels and you're mm-hmm. going to actually have the world to you yourself. And then yeah. like you know, it opens up. That's pretty common for some of the other games, too, where it's like, you know, we're going to have you have this intro mission and I need you to walk from point A to point B. But kind of like all the streets on the way are blocked off. So you you just you have one one pathway to walk down. Like we're really teaching the tutorial how to how to move through the world right Right. now. And I think it I get the sense that it's sort of magnified with this because the it's a brand new main character. So it's giving his story like the the beginning of his story in this game too so uh you sort of have both things going on it's this game is really good guys <laughs> yeah. i'm excited to I, play it i like if 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 i were having to rate like okay what is the the best rpg of 2020 and i would like be quiet cat. <laughs> if, <laughs> if i were to have to like you know hand out an award for it and like i'd be I, this one would have to be in the running for me like right it is it is a well-made well-crafted well-voiced the music is really good i and, and once the world opens up it really starts to open up mm-hmm. and the story is really good. Sometimes I thought I saw where the story was going and sometimes I didn't. It it caught me off guard a couple of times in, in a good way. Like I was very pleasantly surprised. Um it's it's really good and you could tell that someone was really good at writing the story behind the scenes cuz they they like there's so many threads being connected and right. Uh, if you're afraid of like not knowing about the other Yakuza games and then not being able to get into this one, I'm a prime example of somebody who knows nothing of the other Yakuza <laughs> games, and I'm having the best time with this game. I, I, I sort of get the sense that it's almost like uh, in Persona 4, where they reference Persona 3 every once in a while, but like if you don't if you don't know who those characters are, they only show up for like two voice lines and then they leave so it's like oh i don't know who that was anyway yeah you know there's there's no real you don't need to know anything yeah i think i think there have been some references to characters maybe sure i i don't want to say what because i get i i i'm scared of spoiling something but there's there's definitely a character that i believe based on the dialogue i was having that he must have had taken place in an earlier part of the series because they were making a lot of references to things. Oh, and okay. I was just kind of like, well, you're probably somebody from something, but I don't <laughs> you know seem you. seem very important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, um, I really, I really liked the uh, attention to some of the detail. Like, of course, most of the, the voice actors are not Asian, but the one korean character they introduce at some point well there's a couple but there's the the one in particular he is very clearly voiced by a korean man and oh, uh, cool. he says words in a way that a korean person would that's not so out of the realm of understanding where you, you just can't understand what he's saying but there's like specific words that he says that i'm like yeah you have the korean accent right there oh that's cool um yeah, so it, there was like some detail given to that. Um, gosh, the game's funny in a in a Saints Row kind of way, funny to me, mm-hmm. where it's like it's it's got that bad, dirty humor, but it's <laughs> it's hilarious. It's done in like with a, like an Asian flair to a Saints Row universe, right. which I and guess like, is some of the side quests get real weird. Like oh, the main story is always so serious and so well done, and like. S- so dramatic and then the oh. side quests are just like let's dress up as a chicken mascot and sell right. fried chicken it's just like wait what <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a side quest called the the sujimon decks mm-hmm. where you have to <laughs> it's basically like the the people you 
fight in the game, you're collecting data on them, and then like for the Sujimon, <laughs> that's uh, really teacher. good. <laughs> so good. Oh, oh my god! And like, um, I I, I won't. The, the game's not hard at all to me. Uh, I know mm-hmm. like they they don't unlock harder difficulties. You have to play through normal. I've heard that New Game Plus you unlock. Uh, harder difficulties and the game goes up to like each character's class can go up to level 99 and each character has like six classes that they can switch to so like i'm i'm already like i'm like i can't even i can't even imagine getting that i'm i'm like i'm like at level 22 and i feel like (laughs) i've got to be like halfway through the game and i can't even get one job to level 99 it's it seems so it seems way too high. So I imagine that a lot of that stuff is new game plus. Like, yeah. Because the the things I'm fighting, there's no way they're going to give me enough XP unless I grinded forever. Which, right. you know, that's not fun. So, <laughs> But uh, the, the pace of the game is pretty good. I kept finding myself um, moving towards doing the, the main story before I was, before I should, which was still fine because like there's so many items and stuff in the game that you could just chow down on um mm-hmm. the side quest like you said just absolute nonsense hilarious just bonkers it's, it's nonsense oh and you also get summons in this game um <laughs> yeah you do <laughs> oh my gosh you, you get like um and i don't you know i can't even i don't want to say it like there's a there's a lot of word play going on in this stuff that i just i can't do mm-hmm. but it's it's great oh my gosh the the summons are ridiculous <laughs> and you get summons from doing side quests so if you're, oh, you're ever okay. like i want more summons uh side quests right um there is a there is a i guess an optional party member you can get um which I, I can't imagine people would pass up this optional party member. Um but but there is an optional one. I, I guess this game does have like romances as well, but it's it, there's not emphasis on it like uh okay. other games. It's it's pretty it's pretty easily done and it doesn't seem to have like real uh ramifications to anything. Uh mm. there's like there's three options that are basically akin to NPCs and then the other two are party members and they all basically require a different stat of yours, a different like social stat or whatever maxed out to 10 combined with <clears throat> giving them a gift or something like that. I don't remember. Oh, okay. So um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, this game is a lot of fun. And like I said, I, I got it on the 22nd. I'm already on chapter 12 or 13. I don't remember. I think oh, there's, wow. like, there's like 15, 16 chapters or something. Right. Uh, like I'm, I'm, I am I'm, have been burning this game. I've been, I, I, it'll be done by next pop for sure. Yeah, then you can, you can start doing <laughs> all the optional stuff. Yay. I'm excited because this is the kind of like, sometimes side quests just feel kind of like, Go fetch this. Go do that. And go get the me, six boar skins. Right, right. There is there is sort of a thing like that. It's called the part time hero, um, <laughs> which is a which is its own side quest to do the part time hero. But like then they have like a bunch of those fetch these do whatever. But it they're not treated the same way as like actual side quests. Those are just like right. you run into it and you do it. Um, yeah. There's so many mini games in this game too. <laughs> yep. So many. They just they like crammed in Virtua Fighter 2 and like or something yep. like it and like there's a Mario Kart game in this. There's <laughs> um there's golfing, baseball, uh just just mini game after mini game after mini game yep. just like karaoke. Around. Karaoke, there's a crane game that I I have yep. spent way too much time doing (laughs) um and oh there's a there's a business management game uh in in this where you basically buy up properties and then you do shareholder meetings oh i love that in yakuza zero 
Oh, was it oh, in there? <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that's back. That's so much fun. You make a ton of money from that. That's honestly yep. like that's th- that's honestly how I make all my money in this game was do that. Then you can have infinite money. Basically, yep. money is never a problem. Um, there's kind of like a, a, a like outside of the Mario Kart game, Phoenix, be quiet. <laughs> outside of the Mario Kart <laughs> mini game, there's a there's just kind of like a regular like racing collecting game. There's <sighs> there's there's so much in this game, and <laughs> it is really good. It has its problems. For sure. sure, like I, I could, I could, I could, you know, nail it for certain things that are not, not great. But honestly, I, like because I was having so much fun, I kind of let those things slide a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, little things like there was this one dungeon that was ridiculously long. Like I, I felt like I was in there for like thirty minutes, and I was like, "What is this dungeon?" Like, <laughs> right. like it's like this is like a this is like one of those Final Fantasy dungeons where you're just like, "Where is the end?" <laughs> to right? This Am I labyrinth? lost? <laughs> but um, like like there was that sort of thing where it it just went on needlessly long. There's um, there's some boss fights that felt kind of ridiculous, but then again, like maybe it was because I wasn't fighting that much. Like, I don't know how much of the the problem was on me. I was definitely pushing the story harder initially because I just, I really wanted to get more information Mm -hmm. um, because the story is really good. Yeah. Uh, So this, this game gets like, my highest recommendation this is like (laughs) you know obviously this is not for this is not for kids and it's it's very m-rated like yeah and and it's probably not as bad as like like like, this is not like a you know there's no naughty stuff in the sense Mm-hmm. But there's there's a lot of more. It's it, it, there's implied all all over the place, and there's just oh, okay. It's it's implied mostly, and like right. for example, I don't think the main character ever kills anyone, like ever. Mm-hmm. So like he he just beats people up and knocks them out basically, and makes right. them you know see his way of things mm-hmm. instead of because mm-hmm. like killing is wrong, and he's a yakuza just right. <laughs> right. So I'm just. <laughs> He is wild, and boy does boy does this game really really like to talk about Dragon Quest. Yes. Uh, oh, they're they're like, all so obsessed with Dragon Quest. It's the funniest are they? thing. Are yeah. they all like that? In Dra- in Yakuza Zero, there is a side quest to recover someone's day one copy of Dragon Quest Three because it's set in the eighties, um, right. and it's it's like you know it's not even like dragon warriors like dragon story three just came out today and it's like okay i get and it's, it's even like the premier japanese rpg <laughs> about you know it's this company and it's like really right. close to nx's name <clears throat> it'll be like mx it's just like okay i get it's dragon quest three all right i get it <laughs> they they really talk about dragon quest like constantly throughout this yeah. game it's, 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 it's like, very funny you, you almost have to be like it's a like, did they pay? <laughs> Wait, do you want me to pick up Dragon Quest Eleven? Like, what do you? That, that game's great. Like, I'll play it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny. Uh, the the main character, um, he wants to be a hero like in Dragon Quest. He wants to be that's awesome. The hero of Dragon Quest. He's just constantly like, I want to be like the character from Dragon Quest. <laughs> I'm going to be the great hero. I'm going to save the world. I'm the hero. It's That's great, just, and it, it it manifests in this story in just such a way that I, I had the greatest time. I had yeah. the greatest time with this game, and uh, I I assume I'm going to beat it by by uh, next podcast. And while I will never I will never tell anybody the ending, it, I'm sure I'm going to love it because there's they've set up all the pieces so nicely that this can only end in an amazing way i really hope that this game sells really well i hope they continue Mm -hmm. making an rpg version of the yakuza series like they can still keep doing the 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 other form the action beat them up sort of way but i really hope they keep this one going Um, yeah i'd I'd like that the 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 development team was just like 
look, we've made like seven beat em up RPGs. Like, <laughs> they're good, but we kind of wanted to try something different. So we wanted to try this turn based RPG thing. And if you guys don't like it, then let us know and we'll do something different. But if you guys like it, then cool. And so far, it seems from reviews and sales, it's been doing really, really well. And I, 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 I hope they continue down this path. At, at the very least, to just try something new and try something different. And then, <laughs> you know, maybe next time it'll be a, a strategy RPG, you know? <laughs> just, just some, a little something different. Yeah, that's that's great. I'm, I'm glad that it's selling well because I, yeah. uh, I'm in, I'm already in love with this game in, in a way that I was, like, I, I think I found a new game to love. Right. Which I haven't found uh, something like this in a long time. So, right. um, I played a couple other things, but I'll be honest, uh, nothing crazy to really talk about. So we'll just go ahead and go into what have you been playing, Boston? Oh, um, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so like, the majority of December was like this this uh, sprint of recording like four times as much as I usually do to get the two week break that we get for the holidays. And yeah. then as soon as I finished all that stuff, I was just like, man, I'm tired. I don't really want to play anything. <laughs> so I I kind of didn't. <laughs> um, I, didn't, I didn't play a whole lot, and what I did play wasn't really uh, any RPGs. Because um, I want to play uh, Like a Dragon, but it's not out on PS5 yet. It doesn't come out until March. So I'm sort of like, well, I don't want to... I could play it on my Series X, but like that's not where I've been playing them, and like I don't, I don't want to get the <laughs> PS4 version, because the PS5 version will run right. better, and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, so... Yeah. Um, that was the only one I was really looking forward to. And I am, um, like we talked about last month with um, uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, not as much of an RPG as I was expecting it to be. Um, and I started playing Immortals Phoenix Rising, whatever that title is for Ubisoft's <laughs> uh, Breath of the Wild thing. Also not as much of an RPG as I was expecting. So that's fine. <laughs> so uh, unfortunately I can't talk about that because that's not really an RPG um, but let's go into RPG releases for January 2021 uh, starting off here with Atelier Ryza 2 Lost Legends and the Secret Fairy coming out for PS4, PS5, Switch and PC on the 26th um, I played a, a bunch of the first one I really liked it that was my first Atelier game um, and this one looks really good um, I should Go back and finish that first one at some point, because I, I was <laughs> enjoying that quite a bit. Uh, Disgaea 6 Defiance of Destiny comes out for Switch and PS4 on the 28th. Um, this one doesn't really seem to change up the format um, at all, so I, I feel like you, you kind of know what you're getting into at this point. Um, I think this one has 3D models um, for everybody. I think that's kind of its big thing. Um, but otherwise it's, it's a disguise game. So y you know whether or not you're into that at this point. Uh, the, uh, Yakuza remastered collection comes out for Xbox one and PC on the 28th. Uh, this is the, the remasters of three, four and five. So essentially they took the PS3 version, brought it to 1080p, um, 60 frames, and then kind of released them. So they're not like kiwami one and two they're not like zero they're not totally redone just kind of uh scoop them up uh sort of frame rate and resolution wise um so uh all three four and five will all be sold separately too and i think they're uh they might be on game pass as well um but don't quote me on that uh outriders is coming out for pc ps4 ps5 xbox one and series x on february 2nd uh this is people can flies People are calling it like a, a Destiny like, but that's not really. It's this single player offline kind of power and skill based RPG shooter throwing power and fireballs sort of thing. Um, I've been following this for a while. It looks pretty cool, um, but I'm I'm I like people can fly a lot, so I'm hoping this reviews well or at the very least is is received pretty well um so something i'm going to keep my eye on because it it seems like it could be kind of neat and uh last but not least ease nine monstrum Knox comes out on ps4 on february 2nd 
Um, uh, let's move into news stories. Uh, Alice announced that they have big plans for Persona's 25th anniversary. Uh, they also did a, a tiny little update here on SMT5's development. It says it's still going well, but no real news to uh, to talk about about uh, you know anything specific. It's just like, hey, we're still working on SMT5. It's still going really well. Um, they didn't say anything specifically for 2021, which is going to be Persona's 25th anniversary, um, which is crazy to think about. Um, uh, but I, we were sort of talking a little bit here uh, <clears throat> at the beginning of the show about what we think that Atlas might have for the anniversary. Um, I think we all kind of agreed that Persona 6 is probably off the table until SMT5 is out. Uh, yeah, it and seems a like they lot of put... the a lot of the staff for Persona Five got shifted over to Project Re Fantasy, right? So I I wouldn't imagine that they're they've got anything done for Persona Six. If they have, it's just basically tossing the idea of what are we doing around, right? It, I can't imagine they're working on it at all. Yeah, I I think for me, one thing that I feel like, at the very least, I would like would be a PC port for Persona 5 Royal, especially with Strikers coming out and being a direct sequel to 5. And with Strikers coming out on PC, it's sort of like, well, I hope you played the first one on another platform because <laughs> you're going to be real confused about, hey, everyone's back in town. It's like, wait, who are all of these? Why are there like 12 people here? Um, yeah. I think they need to just do all the Persona games they've redone over the years and put them on Steam. Like, I, those yeah. PSP games that I would... I really want to go back to those some days. It bothers <laughs> me that I played most of Persona 1 and didn't finish it through. Yeah. And Persona 2 seemed like it had a lot of really cool ideas in yep. it, even if it oh, I love to. too long in the battle system. But <laughs> Right. And we never got that Eternal Punishment remake over here. Right. Yeah, it'd be great to see all those. I mean, at a minimum, it'd be nice to see 3 and 5 Royal um, yeah. at least come out. Because then you'll have like 3, 4, and 5 kind of the modern Persona games. Um, I'd like to, I, I would also like to see all of them at the very least to give people the option of here you can go play all of these Persona games instead of like, well, they're available on the PSP. And you can kind of play them on the Vita or a PS3. Do you have either one of those? And everyone's like, no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even have either one of those. I, um, I, I honestly think that's the, the best bet on like what they'll announce, um, unless it's way yeah. off, way out of left field, because Arc System Works cannot handle um, no. another Persona fighting game at this time. And yeah, because they're, they're, they're still busy on um, Guilty okay. Gear Strive. And also, they're definitely working on the next Dragon Ball. 100% oh, they're yeah. working on the next. That, 100%. That's, yeah. They've made so much money from that. They're, that's that's yeah, on Let's their do plan. another one of those. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, other than that, I'm not entirely sure. I feel like since this is so Persona focused, I don't think we'd see anything about you know, any of the SMT games right. getting ported to anything else. I, I feel like we, we probably wouldn't on an SMT anniversary. You might be able to see those uh, right. potentially as a collection come over to switch. Um, but other than that, I'm, I'm not entirely, I'm not entirely sure what other persona stuff would be eligible. Yeah. That, I'll like, tell you, I can't think of anything. Yeah. My dream persona release that will never, ever happen or anything, but would be, if they made a single game that was a sequel to three, four, and five, it just had like <laughs> no, nice like characters from each as like college students or adults, right? Or right. both, really. Like you could have Persona three as adults, Persona four as college, right. that's, Persona Q three. That's why I loved uh, Persona two <laughs> yeah. was because you had yeah. that cast that was basically all adults. You had the well, journalist, right. the yeah. um. What physical trainer, the police officer, and it was basically a, a team of adults, and the main protagonist was female, and that game is 
probably not remembered by a lot of people. Had the yeah. greatest final boss, which I will never spoil, even though it's <laughs> an old game, because yeah. that that just deserves that just deserves the surprise you have on your face because it makes sense in the world of Persona Two. But right, right. <laughs> Uh, next news story here is that Unsung Story will buy, finally be launching in early access. Um, if anyone doesn't remember what Unsung Story is, it makes sense, because uh, it was a, a successful Kickstarter uh, game back uh, this time in 2014. Um, this was the big thing where uh, they were taking the Final Fantasy Tactics and Vagrant Story uh, developer Yasumi Matsuno um, and saying, like, we're going to make a new kind of final fantasy tactics like we're gonna make a uh you know turn-based grid-based strategy rpg and it did super well made six hundred sixty thousand dollars, and then disappeared <laughs> like r- really very quickly vanished um after a while uh, i think it was um little orbit uh was a publisher they finally scooped up the rights to this after it uh, this long falling out happened and then they're they're sort of financing across the finish line to early access um so it, it seems like it's still kind of a ways off after that uh they're talking about maybe about a year and a half after it enters early access which isn't unreasonable but um i mostly want to talk about it because i think that game looks super cool and i'm glad that it's it's kind of continuing to get developed and continuing to make progress even after drama you know kickstarter drama um uh and last news story here a couple of rpg announcements here the game awards 2020 that happened here uh last month in december uh bioware showed off a cinematic teaser for dragon age 4 uh continuing to not learn their lesson about showing stuff off too early um they they're yep (laughs) <laughs> doesn't seem to be a lot about Dragon Age other than, yes, we're still working on it, which is fine. I, I believe you. Uh, <laughs> continuing that trend, they also showed off a super short teaser for the next Mass Effect something. I think it was said, like, Mass Effect will continue. Um, so, cool. Evidently, it's going to be a direct sequel to 3 or something like that. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of stuff in there that looks very much like it's in the original trilogy's storyline continuity. Try not to use the word universe because that's an easy joke. Um, but, you know, that that whole thing. Um, but yeah, I just, by the way, you gotta, gotta stop doing this. We know you're working on Dragon Age and Mass Effect. Those are like your two franchises right now. So we, we can sort of figure that out. Yeah, just... Get your studio stuff straightened up and, yeah. and come back to us. We'll be here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Disco Elysium is finally getting an update for consoles. Uh, this was when the game came out on PC. They're like, yeah, of course we're coming out on consoles. Don't worry about it. But we're going to do it in-house. So, you know, it might take us a little while. Um, they announced a final cut update, uh, which is coming to PS4 and PS5 in March and other consoles, including Switch in May. Um, the reason why this uh, took a while is because it has full voice acting, uh, which is wow. interesting and kind of not what I was expecting out of that game. That sort of uh, it always seemed like one of those traditional kind of isometric PC games where it's like, yeah, of course we don't have voice acting. There's like 40 bajillion words in this game. Like, I don't I'm not going to voice act all this. And then whoops. They sure are. <laughs> so uh, that's coming out in uh, March and uh, May, respectively. And uh, last one here, Ruin King, Ruined King was announced. Uh, this is a new turn-based RPG in the uh, League of Legends universe. Riot Games has been um, essentially contracting all these different companies. Like, you're going to make a first-person shooter, and you're going to make an RPG, and you're going to make a tactics game uh, all in the league universe um and uh this one is being made by airship syndicate which is the team that made battle chasers night war which means i am super excited about it because that game was (laughs) really good and like 20 hours so if anyone wants to go play it not super long um but it looks like exactly the same battle system exactly the same art style which is is really really exciting 
Um, but that was really it. Uh, usually these shows are not RPG focused because those are kind of not the the big names and kind of not the big trailers. They showed off some other stuff like, hey, Dragon Age or sorry, Dragon Quest Eleven is out and stuff that's already been out. Um, like Final Fantasy VII Remake. Hey, that's still out. You should go play that. Uh, but that's <laughs> a stuff we've already talked about on this show. Uh, and that's all of our news stories. So that's our episode for this month. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. If you'd like to visit us, you can do so at pickinguppepixels.com. Every to find and follow us is on the right-hand side of the page, including patreon.com slash e1m1. Your ones are numbers. Get all the cool behind-the-scenes early access exclusive audio over there. Um, uh, the best tier is the $5 a month tier. It's only a month, not per episode. Um, so it's, it is pretty cheap and you get a lot of great stuff and uh Musum, where can we find you on the internet uh you can find the hub of all my audio endeavors at jbaudio.net um i think i missed it last time because i missed last cast but i released a new album or, or i re what, what did i do i remastered my <laughs> first album right. which an hd like, remake Yes, like, which is to say the first album was never mastered in the first place because I had no idea what it was doing. But um, <laughs> So I buttoned up a lot of those tracks and threw in a bunch of B-sides and stuff. So there's like an 18-track album now uh, for stories yeah. remastered that you can find on iTunes and Amazon and Spotify and all that. Go, so. go buy it on Bandcamp at Sports Artists. Oh, yes, do that. Yeah. I get more money from there. There you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and Mina, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitch dot tv at mina ko rocket or on youtube under the same name and boston and you can find all my shows at e1m1.com thank you so much everyone for listening and our adventure continues next month bye bye, bye.